I have a problem with my paraffin heater. Works very well, gives off a great heat, but when I try to turn it off, it doesn't turn off completely. That's the off button there. So I push that. The wick doesn't go all the way down, so I've got to turn it. So here we are 15 minutes later, and you'll see what happens if I turn this on again. I'm just going to lift this so you can see. It's still burning down there. So I just turn the wick on and it carries on burning. It doesn't turn off completely. And with the screws removed, I can just take the, the top off. So the top cover can come off. Take out these screws on the side. Always keep your screws in a container. Two more screws on this side. And this can be removed. And hope it will now come apart. The sides have two screws at the bottom. Batteries can also come out. And this dial this pulls off and try to take the whole thing off. Much easier. So this is how the paraffin heater works. When you put the paraffin container in, um, that little cap goes into the hole there and it presses down on, on that lever. And only then can you turn the dial. As soon as you lift the container up, it cuts out. And when you turn the dial, and hear, the, hear that clicking sound, that is what it is. So we'll hold down that lever and just turn that dial, and you can hear it clicking. And behind this wheel, there is a spring which helps the dial return back to its original position. So when starting your paraffin heater, turn the dial which raises the wick and like that. And when you push the start button, to remove this cover, there's only one very small little screw holding it in there on the one side. Need two screws that hold this on. If you need to adjust that spring to make it tighter or stronger, you look in the front here, you'll see that there's a little screw right in the middle. If you release that, take it right out. There's also a little circlip which uh, fits into a little groove on the back there. So now with the circlip back in place, I can actually just turn this little gear wheel until it's nice and tight. And And to remove the wick holder, there are four little wing nuts, one on each corner. They just have to be released. And now, grabbing the cover on each side and wiggling it upwards, I can actually pull it right off the top.
So that's a procedure to follow if you're going to change your wick, which I'm not going to do. I just took it apart to show you how it's done. And when you replace it, you'll notice that right over there is a line all the way around. And that lines up with the top of the uh, whatever this is. When you're reinstalling it, make sure that that little gear fits into the gear on the side of the holder. Now we put the wing nuts, wing nuts back on again. And now to retighten the spring, I've taken the little circlip out again. And there's the little retaining pin. I've put the dial on and I've turned it all the way to the left so the wick is right at the very bottom of its travel, like that. Then you'll notice that there's a little pin there and the end of the hook, the, the end of the spring has got a little hook and that's supposed to engage there. Then I'm going to put the circlip back into the groove. And then I'm going to put the little pin in place. And then just check the tension of the spring. Now it's time to replace the cutoff switch. This little spring here rests against that bar. This lever over here rests on top. Also, if you want your paraffin heater to work better, just wind it up, wind the wick up, and have a look at the, at the wick. Have a look at the condition of the wick. Sometimes you'll find that these very hard black deposits all the way around the top. You can actually get like a pair of pliers, you can actually crush them, you can hear them cracking. But the best way to do that is just let it burn dry. So we just get a container, pull all the paraffin out, back inside. And then I'm going to light it. And put the top back on. So now this is about two hours later. I think the reservoir was bigger than I thought. You can see all the redness has gone away, but it's still still burning underneath. As you can see, that's all the tar and carbon and stuff burning off the top of the wick. So now everything has finished burning. I'm going to just take this off. It's a little bit warm. So now you can see the color of the wick. It's actually turned white again and it's really nice and soft and fluffy so it's going to burn a lot better. So before we light this again uh, put the paraffin in and wait at least half an hour for the paraffin to get sucked up into the wick before you light it. Thanks for watching.